Ahem. Is this thing on? <laughs> hey, it's Graham Breitenstein, the host of This Week with Drunk Astrology, the podcast. And you know, at the top of every new year, it can be so easy to fall into a mindset that's like, well, it's a new year. I guess I'll like do some goals. I don't know, a couple friends are doing dry January. Maybe I should do dry January. But you know what? That's not you, and that is most certainly not me. You know, we start 2024 with Mercury, the planet of our thinking mind, stationing direct. So that means the planet that rules the way our brain functions is stopped. So we experience some brain fog, a lack of clarity. We might be a little hungry for change, a little hungry to set some goals, but we're not functioning at our full potential. That's okay, because your astrologer here has created a free resource for you to clear through your mental muck. I'm calling it the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, and it is absolutely free, 0.00. Free 99. This thing is full of science backed prompts around goal setting and astrological insights because the timing of setting your goals is just as important. And that's exactly what astrology teaches us. So, to get it, you're going to go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. And in less than a minute, you're going to download your PDF and you're going to start getting to work. And here's what's cool. In 2024 and for the next 20 years, Pluto, the planet of power, it's the source of our power as a collective, changes into Aquarius. So that means the source of power for all of us to tap into lies in Aquarian themes. What are Aquarian themes, you might be asking? Aquarian themes are community, collaboration, and communication. You are not going to be working through this journal alone. No, 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 no. You and I are going to be working together to fill this out and to manifest our most amazing year ahead. And here's the challenge. I implore you to bring in people that you admire, people that you respect, people that you love, people that you care for, whether that's family, friends, your partners, your co-workers, your teammates. Bring them into this process. The more we share this resource, the more we are all tapping into the power that is available to us. It is no longer the solo Capricorn journey. Pluto's been there, done that since 2008. For the next 20 years, our power lies in community. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this together. We're going to share this with the people that we love, that we respect, that we want to see win. So again, go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. It is also, if you scroll up, the first link in the show notes. Download that PDF in less than a minute. And you and I are going to do this together. Don't miss this opportunity to create your most amazing year You're going to thank me later, I promise. So now that you got your journal, why don't we hop into this week? Good afternoon, folks. Happy Monday and happy new month to everyone out there. Happy August. It's a new month. It's a new week. It's a new vibe. This is Straight Up Astrology, and I am Graham Breitenstein, astrologer and the creator and founder of Drunk Astrology. On this podcast, we discuss the cosmic weather for the week ahead, and this particular report is for the week of August 2nd through the 8th, 2021. How's everybody feeling after this past weekend? (laughs) If you didn't listen to last week's podcast, I highly encourage you do now that we're on the other side of it, and you can look back in hindsight and go, oh, wow, that either happened to me or that happened to someone I know in my circle, and I discussed this with, you know, whoever, but this past weekend was a volatile as all get out. Now, the first half of the week was pretty nice. It, it had its, you know, turbulent moments, but not, not 
you know, not too, not too shabby. Motion, movement. But this past weekend, Sunday in particular, because we had the sun combust mercury, everyone thinks they're right. Everyone is in the mood to fight and say this is you know, my way or the highway. Mercury had its opposition to Saturn. The sun had its opposition to Saturn. And then the asteroid series went into Gemini. So that is a lot of energy. That is all. That all happened on Sunday. That was just Sunday. On Saturday, we had the quarter moon in Taurus, which kicked up the energy of the full moon in Aquarius and said, hey, we need to... We need to we need to release something. We need to release someone. So sometimes I totally recognize this that sometimes that's loss. And you know, w- within my own um inner circle, you know, there was there was there was loss and that that is part of it. Now that's where you that's where you go into just the the peaceful release and go, "Okay, I'm going to peacefully allow this person to, to move on to their next, their next generation, their next moment, their next whatever, whatever the next is, that is part of it. Um, you know, this energy is all encompassing, right? So sometimes the energy is we have to let, we have to let someone go because there's negative patterns being repeated, or sometimes there's negative patterns within ourselves that have to be repeated. So sometimes it's. The release happens within ourselves. Sometimes it happens within our relationship dynamics where we have to go, you know, this type of energy is holding me back and I'm not going to allow that anymore. So I have to release you or I have to release my dynamic with you and maybe we can maybe we can decide on a new dynamic later on. But for right now, this dynamic is not working and for what I want to manifest for myself, hello Aquarius full moon, at this present moment I have to release you. But then there is this other form of of release which comes in come in, comes in the shape of loss. And that's happened in my inner circle and you know, we're working through it, we're breathing through it. But that's just that's part of this energy. So I want you to just think about how things are mapping out for you, how things are playing out. The the planets are up there, the stars are up there, the asteroids are up there, and they're doing what they do. And now we have to take what they do up there, what they're presenting us, and then we have to work with that. And we have to say, okay, based on the planetary alignments, this is how I can move. This is how I can look at this because astrology offers perspective. Right, And it's a change of perspective. It's a change of your outlook. It's a change of your POV. So that's what I, I really want you to do, especially this week, as we move into this week now, because now we have more of a fast-paced week. Last week, that first half was, was decent. Friday, Saturday, Sunday got way more volatile, way more reactionary, way more reactive, way more... Um, just compressed. There was a lot of energy compressed and then it popped. Now we come into a week where Uranus has aspects with the sun and Mercury. So now that is change. That is motion. That is forward. That is momentum. That's it's, it's frenetic and it's wild. And sometimes we don't see it coming, but if anything, Bare minimum, this week is all about activating change. And the way to get through weeks like this is to to lean into it. If you're someone that's got a lot of fixed energy in your chart or you're a fixed sign, so whether you're Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, or Aquarius, fixed signs tend to, to heavily resist change. If you fall into one of those signs or if you have pulled your chart, or had a reading, and you know that you're fixed dominant, this is one of those weeks where you're going to be challenged. This is one of those weeks where you really, more than anyone, have to lean into it. You have to just kind of like flow and be flexible. Now, those those aren't necessarily two words that are, you know, that are... (laughs) Uh, the favorites of fixed signs or fixed dominance, but that is that that's what you ideally want to do is you want to just be flexible, you want to be adaptable, 
and you want to be able to to go with the flow a little bit. Now, the mutable signs, you know, like like me as a Virgo, right? So whether you're a Virgo, Pisces, Gemini, Sagittarius, you know, we we're made for this. And I'm also mutable dominant in my chart. So it's just like, oh, yeah, I got to do build a whole new life in this area. No problem. Like, sure, let's let's see what that looks like. You know, it's about endlessly being curious. So I will pass that on to the cardinals and fixed signs or whether you're cardinal fixed dominant in your chart. If you don't know and you want to know, you know, go to the website and book a reading and we'll talk about it because there's lots to unpack there. <sighs> OK, so we're going to we're going to we're going to discuss all of this. And but Uranus is the headliner this week, as is a Leo new moon on Sunday. And as is Venus working with Uranus as well in a very productive way. Mercury and the sun work with Uranus in a stressful way, a friction-inducing way. Um, but that's, it's, it's all good. It's, it's meant to wake you up. It's, meant to, it's almost like you know when, you're, when someone's like talking to you and you're kind of checking out. You're kind of like, I mean, I'm here. I'm hearing you, but I'm not really hearing you. This is when that person grabs you on the shoulders and says, wake up. <laughs> That's what this week is, okay? So you might have already felt like you were awakened this past weekend with all those aspects. But now this is now another evolution. This is now another, this is another perspective because it's Uranus. Uranus is involved now, and he's not one to to not be seen or felt or heard, right? Because he's the rebel of the Zodiac. He wants, he wants explosive change. He wants new ideas. He wants innovation. He wants a brand new perspective. And remember that this year is being held by the Saturn-Uranus square. And we've already had the two of three of those aspects. And the third and final is December. But that square is long-holding. So now we get a kick up with the sun and Mercury working with Uranus and Venus as well, but in a productive way and in a brilliant idea way or like, oh, my God, that's perfect. Like, that's exactly how I want to align myself or that's exactly who I want to align myself with with this idea. The sun and Mercury, you know, they they trigger that Saturn Uranus square. And now they're going to kick up the, the, the changes that are necessary. The old way, the old dynamics aren't working anymore, And right? You might finally have come to that point where you say, I'm not allowing this anymore. I'm at a point in my life where I said it last week, I'm going to say it again, where it's just I'm not receiving that because it's not about me. It's about you and you're projecting onto me or – Anywhere where you feel what you might be the projector. You also have to look at yourself, right? You, you Mirror, mirror, mirror. The, the eclipses are Gemini Sagittarius, and Gemini is all about the mirror, right? So you also have to look at yourself. You can't just say, like, oh, I'm in conflict with someone, and they're projecting onto me. Are you also projecting onto someone? It's a it's a back and forth conversation as Gemini energy always is. It's a back and forth where you have to say, no, I'm assuming now I need to just ask a question rather than assume. I need to be curious and say, OK, I'm feeling like this is what you're doing or I'm feeling like this is what's going on. Is that true? Can you can you clarify whether that's really going on or not? And if you haven't done that then I highly encourage you start doing that, if, especially if you're finding yourself in, in matters of conflict. And let me tell you something. I know that on, on last week's podcast, I, you know, I was just like, listen, if you're going to duke it out with somebody, you know, don't do it on Sunday. Do it under friendlier skies. Your astrologer ended up duking it out. And, you know, sometimes that's what it's called for. <laughs> and, you know, I look at the aspects and go, you know, there is there there is knowing I'm knowing this right now is I, I have an idea where this is going to go. But I think it needs to go there. So I don't want you to judge yourself. I don't want you to to think that you did something wrong or that you should have waited if you if you if you were volatile and you 
and you know you you had that argument you duked it out you called something out whatever it was you didn't do anything wrong sometimes it's just the moment has to pass and i consciously chose that decision that things needed to be revealed and they needed to be called out and they needed to be said and that's leo energy right there you know leo just <laughs> Leos are loud and proud about what they have to say, and I have to say, I have the facts to back up everything that I that I called out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, and it was, and it just is what it is. Now today, it's just interesting because now that there's a Mercury Chiron aspect, and that's just kind of like, oh, there, there's the come down, there's the come down from this weekend. So if you feel like you're kind of coming down from a high or coming down from you know, you're having like a weekend hangover. Uh, you know, the the Mercury trying Chiron today is just like one of those like, OK, let me just like let me just wind down a little bit and let me just go. OK, let me just process this a little bit and and realize that it's ultimately OK. It's ultimately OK. Sun Mercury combustions. Everyone thinks they're right. Right. And I'm not. I'm not fixed. Like I said, I'm mutable dominant. So I don't even, I'm not walking away feeling like I'm right and you're wrong and that's it. But I am definitely acknowledging that this is patterns, you know, patterns repeated. And you might also be living patterns repeated. And this is, this might be the time where you go, yeah, not anymore. Not anymore. I'm standing up. And just saying, no, not going to receive that. And it's not on me to receive. You're going to have to think back and, and receive all of what you're projecting yourself. And you got you to gotta work on that yourself. And that's all of it is fundamentally okay. The skies will get more friendly. And the, the opportunities to reconnect and to, you know, determine a new a dynamic they will come. So hold on, <laughs> especially hold on and buckle in this week as we have all this Uranus energy. Now, before we get into the cosmic weather, a couple little news reports. First and foremost, if you're not on the mailing list, go ahead to drunkastro.com. The link is in the show notes. Put your email address in the pop-up and boom, you will get weekly reports from me with a lot of news. And firstly, I will say all to all of you right here, that the Drunk Astro Web Store 2.0 is now live on DrunkAstro.com. And one of the most exciting things on there right now are the, the Zodiac Superlative Candles. But I'm here to tell you that there's only four signs left. And there's only one of each of these signs. So there's only Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Capricorn. Those are the only candles I have left. And there's only one of each. But the bomb part about the Drunk Astro Web Store 2.0 is that now there's a wait list. So you're going to want to, if your sign's not available and I sell out, go ahead and go to that candle and put your email address into the wait list. And as soon as it is back in stock, you will be notified and you will have your chance to get it. Now, if you're in the local LA area, you can do a pickup. You can go to Tansy Nursery and Shop in Burbank. They have a slightly different stock than I do right now, but right now um, we're we're all low. <laughs> um, and then if you are in the can if you are in the continental United States and or Canada, you can you have shipping options through the web store. So that is that, right? Let me make sure. Yes, that is that's all the that's all the notes that I wanted to cover. Um, now, moving on, let's move on to the moons, and we're going to discuss the moon phases for the week. Of course, she is the fastest moving celestial body up there, changing signs every two and a half days. And the closing aspect that she makes, the last aspect she makes before dipping into the next sign, is what really dictates the, the, the flow of those two and a half days, the, the end result of those days. So if it's positive, then even the stressful aspects that happen under that moon they have a positive end result. If she has separative and or stressful aspects, then it's just like, oh gosh, like 
do I really have to continue working like this? And it's a call. It's a call to action. It's a call to change. But sometimes that change can take longer to to you know to, to really show face, to really take place, and 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 come to fruition. So it's okay, you know. Like the, the the moon really just helps us move and flow and ebb and calm down or work hard. And this week uh, we're in. Let's see, we're in Gemini, Cancer, and Leo. So we're really working with. You know, our squad, making deals, contracts, uh, cancer at home, Leo with our loved ones, having fun. And with that new moon, then it's all about, you know, starting a whole new cycle. So as of today, August 2nd, the moon was in Taurus. Uh, Well, Taurus went void at 1241 a.m. with a square to Jupiter. So there was an overabundance of something, a, a lot of something, a lot of stress, a lot of friction over the weekend. And with all the aspects I already laid out for you from the weekend, yeah, that much was obvious. <laughs> and then at 1.46 a.m., by the way, all the times I give you are in Pacific Standard Time, so be sure to adjust for your time zones. At 1.46 a.m., the moon went into Gemini, uh, where it had a square to Mars at 6.30, so just, you know stressful action there and that's already true for your astrologer because i have to take my car to the shop because the check engine light is on so there's that uh but there's a trying to saturn at 10 19 p.m so hopefully good news um and we have pretty good um planetary aspects but we'll get to that then tuesday which is our busy busy day this week the the moon's in gemini all day making aspects to the sun chiron mercury venus and neptune and then Wednesday, the Gemini moon goes void at 12.38 p.m. with a trine to Jupiter. So positive closing aspects with that Gemini moon. At 2.17 p.m. on Wednesday, the moon goes into Cancer, has a lovely sextile to Mars in the evening. And it's in Cancer all day Thursday, Friday, going void at 3.12 p.m. Friday afternoon, the 6th, with an opposition to Pluto. So now that is, you know, work life versus home life. And there's the opposition there is separative. It's polarizing, but it's also clarifying. So you're going to keep that in mind as you move through Wednesday afternoon, Thursday, and Friday. Then Saturday, bright and early at 1231 a.m., the moon goes into Leo has an opposition to Saturn, so there's there's a, there's a, there's a there's another call to action, but very clarifying about what you're done with, what you're not going to deal with anymore, and how you're going to move forward. And then all day, Sunday the 8th, the moon is in Leo with the new moon happening at 6.50 a.m. at 16 degrees, 14 minutes of Leo. So now that is starting a whole new cycle, right? So we had the first of two Aquarius full moons two weeks ago. Now we've wind down to the new moon. And now over the next two weeks, from the 8th through the 22nd, we're going to wax up to the second Aquarius full moon where we're really going to see how the evolution, how our manifestations and wishes evolved and how they pop for a second time. And take us back to that February, the mid-February mark where we had the the Lunar New Year, the Aquarius New Moon. And we're going to see how the second iteration, the second harvest comes to pass. But for now, this Leo New Moon, ripe for the manifesting, starting new, starting new creative projects, working with creative side hustles in a new way, fun, glamour, adventure, love. All of those things become heightened with Leo season and especially during a Leo new moon. So definitely make sure you get your manifesting on. And uh, we'll talk about that in depth this Wednesday when I go live on Instagram and Facebook uh, for Hump Day Hangover. And we'll talk about that new moon and some more. So I hope you join me at 6 p.m. Pacific on Wednesday. As of now, that time could change. (laughs) And then let's see, on Monday, August Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I want to get in your ear real quick. There are a lot of spiritual viewpoints and perspectives that you can subscribe to. You know, there's astrology, numerology, feng shui, there's Akashic records, there's past life regressions, there's destiny cards. There is just 
any number of ways that you can tap into the universe to get insight, to help you create the life you want to live, to create abundance and prosperity, love and relationships, connection, all those things. And I recognize that there is a lot and that at times it can be overwhelming and it can be hard to figure out who to go to, who can I listen to, who can I trust. So this is why I created the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series. If you're not already listening to it, it's available wherever you're listening to this podcast already, but you can also watch each interview on DrunkAstro.com. There's a whole page there for it, and I've linked the series in the show notes. So in this series, one, I want you to I want you to know all the d- different tools that you can use to manifest big this year because the life that you want, the life that you deserve, it is waiting for you and there are a number of methods to consider, spiritual and non-spiritual. Okay? I'm in this series, I'm not only talking to Tali from the Astro Twins, I'm not only talking to Christina Hollinger, a feng shui expert about how to Feng shui your living space, your workspace, to create a space that is high vibration and that attracts the life you want to live. I'm not only talking to a crystal expert about what crystals are good for the energy of 2024's unique energy. I'm not only talking to a symbologist, a destiny card reader. Have you ever heard of that? Because I hadn't heard of that until I met um, CJ, who is the destiny card reader I bring into this um, series. Um, I'm not only talking... To spiritual folks, I'm talking to an intimacy expert because love and relationships are at the top of a lot of our list, single or not single. We can all learn how to be more intimate with each other, be more authentically expressing ourselves. I'm also talking to Elise Joan, a beach body super trainer and longevity expert because it's not about just creating an amazing life. It's about living a long life, one that you love, one that you want to be healthy for, one that you want to actually stay in for the long haul. So this series is set up to to get you in alignment from all different angles. So if you haven't already, go catch up on the episodes that have already aired. And the new episodes that are coming Every single Wednesday, a new episode will drop until the series is finished. So go back, drunkastro.com. There's a whole page for how to manifest big in 2024. All the videos are there. Watch the interviews. There's a link to this in the show notes. It'll get you right where you need to be. Okay? We're doing this this year. You're doing this this year. Your, your um, Manifest Big in 2024 journal, that is the foundation of what you're going to use this year to set goals that you're actually going to achieve. Now, all these other tools in the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, these are all going to enhance your vibe, enhance the vibe of your living space, your heart set, your mindset, your body set. You are going to be, there's no way by... Using the Manifest Big in 2024 journal by tapping into the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, this is all you need. It's all you need, okay? So in case you haven't got into it, this was just a little reminder. needed to get that in your ear. Let's get back to this episode and keep up this vibration. The Leo moon goes void at 5.23 a.m. with an opposition to Jupiter. So now the opposition to Jupiter is another one of those clarifying moments. It is one of those over amount of. There's too much of that kind of energy. There's too much. So, you know, what, what do I need to release? Maybe who do I need to release? Remember, Jupiter has retrograded back into Aquarius. So back into our friend zone, back into our collaborators, uh, collaborations. And, you know, people that we that we work with, you know, near and far. So just think that whatever you're trying to manifest in that you might not have the right group yet, but that's just a yet. Okay, so just just think 
just t- just start taking stock as as you move through this week and as Uranus pops, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. As Uranus pops certain things, and as you're already been getting clear, you know, clear, ah, clarity around certain dynamics, relationships, and situations. Now we're gonna, you know, this this new moon and then the opposition to Jupiter, and it's also wrapped up with a square to Uranus. So, all things considered, there is definitely new perspective. You are being called to look at everything from a new, fresh perspective and move in a different way. Remember, you can't get what you never got doing the same things you've always done. You have to do it. You have to try something else. You have to move in a different way. This week altogether, plus the Leo New Moon, with a square to Uranus and an opposition to Jupiter means that you've got to do it with an, in a new way with people you've never done it with before. So if you ask me, that's actually pretty exciting. Now that I've worded it like that, I'm like, shoot, I like this. <laughs> now, sometimes the change is great, and sometimes you're able to to, to lean in and and go with it. Other times, it's, it's more... It's less comfortable and more uncomfortable, and you're just like, oh, my gosh, this is a lot. This is a lot of change. Just slow down, especially if you're a Virgo right now. All this Leo energy is in our 12th house, so we're really being asked to slow down. Or if you have a Leo ruled 12th house, then you just – like this is definitely the time for R&R and to like take things as they come, take the hits and take the take the advancements and just go, okay, I just need to sit with this. I need to just feel this for a second and then allow yourself. So I can, I mean, that'll be good for everybody. But just the Virgos right now and anyone with the Leo Rule 12th house, it's just, you know, it's it's a call to just slow down because then we're, we already have Venus and Mars in Virgo right now, but then the Sun and Mercury are going to get there. And then it's just full steam ahead and into work mode. And we're all going to just be like, oh, Lord. I mean, we're already feeling that, like, should I play or should I work? Should I play? Should I work? I don't know. I don't know. Because the Sun and Mercury want to play and the Venus and Mars want to work. So now, we've talked about the moon. So that means that the closing aspects for the moon are nice for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday up until 2.17 p.m. But then from Wednesday afternoon, Thursday, and Friday until 3.12 p.m., they're separative. And then from Saturday, Sunday, and early Monday, they're they're clarifying, separative, but also forward forward moving, right? We're, we're still blasting forward with that Leo new moon. Um, and now as far as the aspects go, so Monday today, we've got we already talked about the Mercury Chiron. But now at 11.53 p.m. tonight, Venus and Uranus have a trine. And now that's a really great idea. That's a really good relationship opportunity. That's just something maybe you didn't see coming, something expected, but maybe it's a great idea. Maybe it's a great money-making idea. Maybe it's a great pull-in for someone like, oh, my gosh, I can work with you. Like that, you know, it's it's something, it's, it's a really nice, great idea, great, connection opportunity great financial opportunity so that's awesome and also today the asteroid juno stations direct now juno is our asteroid of marriage and partnerships and it has been retrograde since april 12th in the sign of sagittarius so now juno stations to move forward and now relationship dynamics are going to start you know wherever you feel like your relationships have been challenged Since April, you know, you go back to April, May, June, July, and now here we are at the top of August. Now that Juno's moving forward, you just kind of go back and, you know, do a brief scan since mid-April and go, oh, okay, I can see where I was questioning certain things in these relationships or friendships or family dynamics. And now you're going to see the third pass, right? Because now Juno's going to retrace her steps all the way until she gets to Capricorn and be like, okay, now, now I see we, I needed to see this and I needed to see you move like this. So now, now I'm clear. And now you decide how you're going to move forward while Juno retraces her steps for the third and final time. 
Let's see, Tuesday the 3rd, that is when Mercury squares Uranus at 6.57 p.m. So now that is, that is the energy. That's the momentum. That's the change. That's the, oh, I didn't see that coming. That's like an unexpected conversation, an unexpected deal. Um, that, that might take some time to work out the kinks, right? Because now Mercury is going to do the introduction of, of the story on Tuesday. And then Friday the 6th, the sun has his square to Uranus at 4.57 p.m. So right now the sun and Mercury are traveling close. They're really close to each other, right? They just combusted each other yesterday. So now Mercury pulls a little bit faster, a little bit ahead of him. Mercury has it first, then the sun brings it into full focus for the call to change, the call to action on Friday the 6th, and then the Leo new moon kicks up that new cycle with a square to Uranus and goes, okay, we're going to manifest this in, but it's got to be something new. It's got to be something fresh. The perspective has to be new. It's got to be different, or else we're going to get the same old results. Okay, and then other than that, uh, Mars doesn't have any aspects this week, so it's a little bit of a, there's a slower pace to it with, with no Mars aspects, but with all the Uranus, it's, it can be wild. So the conversations are going to kick up the potential, you know, contracts, agreements, and, and, you know, just conversations in general. Uh, they're going to pick up, the sun's going to pick it up and bring things into focus. The Leo new moon is going to kick up things into focus, fresh perspective, new way of thinking or at least an encouragement for a new way of thinking. Um, but then Wednesday the 4th, the sun has a, a nice trine to Chiron, echoing today's Mercury trine Chiron. And then Saturday, Mercury has an adjustment aspect to Neptune at 7.24 p.m. And other than that, that's it. So I hope you all have a wonderful week. Remember, you can always reach out to me. Uh, drunkastro.com. There's a contact form. Send your notes my way. Send your questions my way. Connect with me on social media at Drunk Astrology on Instagram, Facebook. This podcast, of course, hopefully you're already subscribed. If you're not, the link is in the show notes. You can just subscribe to your favorite one, Apple, Spotify, or Google. And yeah, and then yeah, there's only four candles left, folks. So if you're a Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, or Capricorn, or you know one of those signs, make sure you go to DrunkAstro.com, visit the web store, the 2.0 version, because now it's led by yours truly, and you can get on the wait list for whatever candle you're, you're dying for. And don't worry, you're not going to be waiting long. Wink, wink, wink. Okay, folks, have a wonderful week. I will catch you Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. Pacific for... Hump Day Hangover, where we will discuss this new moon in Leo in depth for all 12 signs. All right. Peace, love, and hair grease, folks. Mwah. Hey, one last thing before we go. Who are three people you could share this episode with? Who would benefit from learning astrology in real time? From learning how to work with the energy of the cosmos, from tracking the patterns and cycles, to seeing it in real time, in motion? Can you text them right now? Can you send that message and just say, I'm going to share this show with you because I think that you would really vibe with learning in this way. I would appreciate it. They would appreciate it. And you'll feel good knowing that you're spreading the love. Let's keep that high vibration going. I'll see you next week. Bye.